Welcome to Course 1, Unit 2, Lesson 3, How Do You Value a Bond and Yield to Maturity? This lesson has four lesson objectives. The first is understanding simple interest. The second is understanding compound interest on bonds. The third is understanding the current yield. And the fourth is understanding yield to maturity. So let's get started. Okay, as you can remember from the uh, second lesson, we uh, have our bond investor, Jesse. And Jesse has his bond from Real Estate Empires. And what he's going to do is we're, we're going to look at different ways in which Jesse can value this bond. So really, there's, there's two different ways. You can look at the simple interest or you can look at the compound interest. And under each one of these, you can see I have the coupon yield and the current yield under the simple interest and then the yield to maturity under the compound interest. And that yield to maturity is really the thing that we've got to understand at the end of this lesson. So I'm going to show you why uh, all three of these are different and why the yield to maturity is the one that you really need to understand. So let's go ahead and get started with the uh, simple interest. So in order to understand simple interest, all you're going to do is you're going to add up all the value of the coupons. And you're not going to assume that you're reinvesting any of the coupons. You're just simply collecting those $25 payments throughout the entire term of the bond and you're just adding those up and that's your simple interest. The, the chart might look busy, but as you, as you zoom in here and you look at the first coupon, you can see the first coupon's for $25, the second coupon is for another $25. So the total, that's a running total that you see on the chart. So after two coupons, um, Jesse would have $50 in his hand. After the third coupon, he'd had $75, and after the fourth, he'd have 100. And as you continue to scroll down through the chart, you can see as we arrive at coupon 60 that Jesse has $1,500 from all the coupons. And the way that that was figured out was, was pretty simple, and I guess that's probably why they call it simple interest, is you just take the number of coupons, which for this 30-year bond, he would receive 60 coupons, and you multiply that by the coupon payment, which is $25, and you can see it adds up to $1,500. So the way to understand the simple interest on this is if Jesse would just simply buy the bond uh, at the, on the very first day and he'd hold the bond through maturity and he wouldn't be reinvesting those the proceeds from his coupons and just simply holding on to them and you know holding on to the cash itself the value of the investment would be fifteen hundred dollars and we're, we're not going to count the thousand dollars he used to buy it initially and the thousand dollars he gets back at the end we're just going to value all those coupon payments because that's the money that he made on the investment so when we talk about the coupon yield Okay, and this is under simple interest. The coupon yield is nothing more than taking one year's worth of those coupon payments, which is $50, and dividing that by the par value. You're always going to divide all the coupons for one year divided by the par value, and that's going to give you your coupon yield, which is 5%. And that's all there is to coupon yield. It's that simple. So when you talk about the current yield on a bond, you're typically talking about a bond that's been on the market for a few years. You're not buying it on the very first day. And so what you have to look at is the price that you're buying that bond for compared to the coupon payments. So in order to calculate the current yield, we're just going to take the, the coupon payment that you would receive for one year and divide it by the price at which you bought it for, the, the bond itself. Um, and you just divide those two numbers and you come up with the current yield. So you can see here, if Jesse was going to buy this bond, um, regardless of how much time it was after the initial issue date, there could only be one year left on the bond or there could be 25 years left on the bond. Um, the current yield is taking that coupon, which in the first scenario here is going to be $50, and we're going to divide it by the price, and we're just going to say that the price that he's going to pay for it is $1,200. So when you do that, you get a current yield of 4.2%, just 50 divided by 1,200. So as we move over to the, uh, the actual uh, face value matches the actual price of 1000 and 1000 you take that coupon of $50 divided by 1000 because that's the price you're buying it at, and you can see that the current yield would be the same as the coupon yield. Now, if we talk about a bond that he's uh, purchasing at a discount, let's say $800, you can see that the current yield goes up to 6.3%. So we're, in this example, we're talking about the same exact bond, no, no difference in the bond, just the price at which he's buying that bond at and how that price is affecting the yield because he's getting it at a more expensive price. Now, the problem with the current yield, and which you're going to find out later, the problem with this is that it doesn't account for the amount of money that you lose or gain whenever the bond matures. 
Okay, so as you can see, let's look at this first one that we have where the let's just say Jesse bought this for $1,200. Okay, the current yield on that is 4.2%. But what about the $200 that he's gonna lose when this bond matures? Because we know whenever the bond matures, he's only gonna get $1,000 back because that's the par value. So this does not account for that loss, that $200 loss that he would have whenever he would go to sell the bond. And so likewise, when you look over at, if he could buy the bond at $800, and regardless of how long he holds it, when the bond matures, the bond's going to be worth $1,000. So that's a $200 profit that isn't uh, calculated into that current yield uh, percent that you see there. So when we talk about yield to maturity, that's where that's going to really come into play. So just, just so you know, when somebody quotes you a current yield, it's not accounting for that difference between the price that you're going to pay and the par value whenever the bond matures. So let's talk about the compound interest on a bond. So as we look at our chart, let's go to the first coupon. So after six months, uh, Jesse would receive, and, and this is, we're going to assume that Jesse bought the bond uh, as soon as it was issued, um, just like the very first scenario we looked at. And so you can see Jesse would receive his $25 uh, after the first six months. And then the second coupon, which would be six months later, he's going to receive another $25 check. But here's what's different. That first coupon of $25, we're going to assume that Jesse has invested that $25 into another investment, nothing to do with this bond, but he's invested that into another investment, which is going to provide the same interest rate as what he's receiving on this bond, which is 5%. So that's the big assumption because in six months, let's assume Jesse bought this bond, the bond right now, and then six months later, he gets his first coupon. And then when he receives that first coupon, there's no guarantee that he's able to reinvest that first $25 payment into another 5% yielding uh, security. So that's where when you get into the compound interest and in figuring out what this bond is worth, it, there's a little bit of guesswork. And I'm going to give you some tools in, in the second course to help you uh, estimate what you think you could get on, you know, on an average throughout the duration of a bond. But for right now, let's just make this really simple and let's assume that whatever coupon yield he has on this bond is what he can reinvest his coupons back into at that same rate. So if that was the scenario, after he receives that first $25 payment, let's assume that he reinvested that into a completely different investment, but he invested it into something that's going to make 5%. So as we look at the second coupon, that initial $25 has matured into $26 and then he received the $25 second coupon for a total of $51. So as we look at the third coupon, we know that Jesse has $51 that's maturing at a 5% interest rate as he's waiting for that third coupon, which is gonna be another $25 payment. So each one of these coupons, we're assuming that the previous amount, that previous total is compounding at 5%. So as you can see, when we, when we go through these coupons, when you get up to the 60th coupon, Jesse would actually have $3,400 at the end whenever he receives his, his last coupon payment. Okay, so let's compare the simple interest versus the compound interest. You can see in the simple interest, and this would be for the total duration as if the first day that Jesse bought it clear up to 30 years later. On the simple interest calculation, you're only valuing the bond that it's gonna make $1,500 for you during that duration. But when you look at the compound interest, you can see that it's $3,400 if it's reinvested at 5% for each coupon. So that's a pretty big difference. I mean, we're talking more than double the money on a bond. So let's, under the compound interest, let's look at the yield to maturity. Now, as we talked earlier, we said that we weren't going to, uh, when we were talking about the current yield, we weren't accounting for the difference that somebody would pay for a bond versus what the bond would be redeemed for whenever it is, uh, whenever it reaches its term and that the face value is paid back to the investor. So that's what the yield to maturity accounts for. Not only does it do the compound interest, but it also accounts for that difference between uh, the price that you pay and the face value. So that's why this number is really important because it really wraps all the variables together and it gives you a, a real estimate of, of what you're going to get if you would buy any bond and hold it clear to maturity. And that's how you have to look at the value of the bond. So let's take the very first scenario here. 
And what we're going to assume is Jesse's going to be buying a 30-year bond, but he's, he's going to buy it 15 years after the bond has been on the market. So there's 15 years remaining until the bonds mature. And each one of these scenarios are exactly the same. The only thing that we change between each of the three is that the price that Jesse's paying for each one of these bonds. Okay. So the first one, he's going to be paying a premium for the bond, meaning he's paying more than the face or par value. So the first one, he's going to pay $1,200 for it. Okay. So as we look down, the coupon payments that he's going to receive over the next 15 years amounts to $1,098. Now we're assuming that he's reinvesting each coupon at 5%. Okay, so that's why you have kind of an odd number there. So the coupon's $1,098. The par gain and loss, he's going to lose $200 on the fact that he, he paid a premium for the bond and whenever it matures, he's only going to get $1,000. So he's going to lose $200 there. So that $200 comes right off the top of his coupon payments for a difference of $898. So if he buy this bond at that price, he, if he held it clear to the maturity, he's going to make $898. So as we look to the yield to maturity, so that yield would actually be 3.3% for that, for that purchase price, okay, which is significantly lower than the 5% uh, coupon that you might think when you look at it from a simple interest and in, in coupon yield perspective. So let's go to the second one. Let's assume that he bought the, the, the it's a thousand dollar par bond. He bought it for a thousand dollars. He's got 15 years remaining on it. And so the coupon that he would re the coupon payments, the compound interest on those coupon payments would be the same thing, $1,098. But he has no uh, gain or loss from the, from his purchase price to the face value. So the difference is just going to be the $1,098 and the yield to maturity is 5%. Okay, so when you're buying it for the same price as what the face or par value is, you're going to actually get and you're going to see that coupon yield uh, be exactly what it says on the bond. So here's where it's really interesting is when we look at buying a bond that's selling at a discount. Okay, so we go down, the coupon payments are exactly the same the par value you're actually gaining because you bought it for 800, but you're going to get a thousand back when the bond matures. So you're going to get a $200 plus. So your difference is $1,298. So your yield to maturity on that bond is 7.2% a year, even though it's a 5% coupon bond. So you can see how much of a difference here occurs based off the price that you're buying these bonds for. Anytime you're paying a premium for a bond, your yield to maturity is going to be much different than what your coupon yield is. And that's the thing you really got to understand. And that's why um, understanding yield to maturity is the most important thing you can do when you're understanding how to value a bond. Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, okay, how did he figure that out? How did he figure out the yield to maturity? Well, here's the equation. And it's uh, I got this from zenwealth.com. Um, it's kind of a complex equation. But we've made it easy for you here at Buffett's Books. We have the uh, a calculator on this page, and you can go down there, and we have some practical exercises, a video for the practical exercise to kind of show you how to use the calculator. And you can try this out for yourself, and you'll see that using the calculator solves this really hard math problem for you, and you don't even have to worry about it. So hopefully we've made it easy for you. Okay, so just a quick overview. Um, I want to show you the difference um, as we looked at those different purchase prices and the terminology that we learned all in one. So let's, uh, we're going to zoom in here and look at the very first one. So this would be assuming that we're, that the bond has been on the market for 15 years and that there's 15 years remaining until the bond becomes mature. So let's look at if we would buy that bond for $800 and look at the terminology. So the coupon yield is still 5% because in order to figure out the coupon yield, all you're doing is taking the, uh, the coupon payment for the year divided by the par value. So it's going to say 5%. And as you look across the board, the $1,000 bond price would be 5% and the $1,200 bond price would be 5%. So you can see that's really misleading when somebody gives you a quote based off the coupon yield. That really doesn't mean anything because the price that you pay is going to drastically affect what you actually see on your, on your yield. So let's look at the current yield. To figure out the current yield, we're taking the coupon payments for one year and we're dividing it by the price that you're paying. And as you can see, the uh, first one uh, for $800 was 6.3%, for the 1,000 it was 5%, and for $1,200 it was 4.2%.
Okay, but those aren't the real numbers, and we know that. So when we go down to the yield to maturity, this is actually counting for the difference between the price we're paying and accounting for what we're going to receive back on the face value of the bond. And as you can see, the numbers get even more different than what you saw before with the current yield, where the $800 bond is actually going to give you a 7.2% return, which is great. Um, the $1,000 bond uh, or price is going to give you a 5% return and the $1,200 bond is going to give you a 3.3%, which is significantly, I mean, that's 1.7% lower than what you would be expecting if you were just looking at the coupon itself. So this stuff is really important. Um, I would recommend that you go back and rewatch this video if it really didn't sink in the first time. Um, maybe go even go back to lesson one under this unit two and start from the beginning and watch all three of these videos again. And it would really start to maybe click for you if you didn't get it the first time. So make sure you understand yield to maturity. That's the one you really want to understand and, and have fun working with our bond calculator below this video. So in this lesson, we uh, had four lesson objectives. The first was understanding simple interest, uh, understanding compounding for bonds, the current yield and yield to maturity. And thanks for joining us in unit two and we look forward to seeing you in unit three.